Hey everybody, welcome back. Hope everybody's doing well today. This video is kind of one of those ones that turned into a soup sandwich. My original intro and the title was going to be, Should I Switch from a Mirror and Hairspray to a PEI Sheet? I have tried PEI in the past and have not had good luck with it, but I have been having some problems with the ASA filament, you know, the, the first layer or two. And you can see the problem I'm having with this one. You can see what it's doing to me. So I thought, well, maybe this is a time, you know, a small part will work okay, but maybe this is a time to see if PEI won't give me a better bottom layer than mirror and hairspray. And a bunch of you have been giving me a hard time about using mirror and hairspray. To quote one of my um, favorite old Star Trek references, it's like stone knives and bear skins. So, as you can see, and I've, I'm, I'm not going to show you my original intro when I take the thing out of the package because it just doesn't make any sense anymore. So as you can see, this is a Creality brand spring steel sheet with a PEI layer on it, and it has the magnet base. So and you can see I've actually done quite a bit of printing on it and work with it, and you can see I've actually got a, a um, PLA part on it, which seems to be adhered pretty well. But I didn't put it on this printer at first. That's the Gitech A10M. I didn't put it on that printer at first. I put it on my enclosed Ender 3 because that's where I am doing all of the ASA printing because ASA warps. So the enclosure is a lot better for things like ABS and nylon and polycarbonate that have a tendency to warp because the, the interior temperature is more controlled. But as, as I was putting it on the old Ender 3, and this is my original Ender 3, one of the first 500 ever made. As I was putting it on it, I started running into problems. And there were some, as I, as I was fixing the problems, the first thing I noticed was I had a, about a 10 millimeter drop when I moved the, the, the head from the left, the carriage from the left to the right. Now it's always had somewhat of a drop there and I've just made up for it with the, the bed adjustment. But I thought this time, and also I noticed one of the springs was almost loose having to um, make that adjustment. So I took it all apart, I put the orange springs in it, I had to pull the um, extruder motor back there, I had to pull, I can't open it because I got a print going as you can see, I had to pull off the Mark 8 gold um, extruder and its motor off to get to some of the adjustments so I replaced it with one of the dual gear extruders which I intend to put on every printer I own I like them that much and I got that 10, 10 millimeter sag down to about three millimeters with the new spring it works fine so I adjusted the bed I adjusted the belts I adjusted everything else I moved the z-axis stop switch the limit switch so that I would have the different because the mirror is thicker than the, um, the magnet and the steel spring plate. So I made the mistake of actually taking the tape, the sticky tape off the, off the magnetic tape and putting it on and in retrospect that was a mistake because I couldn't get much of anything to stick to it that I wanted to in this printer. So I'm gonna switch the camera over and um, to a tripod so that I'm not holding it in my hand and, and let's take a look at the mess that I created and let's talk about what I did and what will stick to it and what I never could get stick to it. Okay so first off let's talk about why I'm trashing all of that video that I had made before. I had an intro and I probably got I, even after I weed out all the bloopers where my dog was barking or the mailman or the phone can't went on or that kind of stuff, I've probably got 30, 40 video clips. It's a daunting task. It really is. And most of it, considering all the changes I made and the backs and the forks I went, most of it's worthless. So um, that's one reason. The second reason is, how many sped up videos do you guys want to see of spaghetti being printed? I mean, really. I could show you one or two, but the rest of them you're probably going to switch the channel, switch out to a different channel if you haven't already. So I took off the the um, gold Mark 8 extruder. Let's get that out of the way. And you can see the old springs are buried down here someplace. Just ignore those because they were crap the day they were made. And I got the nice orange springs in it now under the bed. So I bought. I, I have a lot of sandpaper, so. I've got a thousand that I tried, a thousand 
Can you see that? A thousand says it down in the lower left corner. Six hundred and four hundred. And I've got others. I just didn't try them. I've got isopropyl alcohol. I've got acetone. And if you wonder why my acetone is in this small HDPE bottle, it's because my acetone in the garage is in a gallon can and I didn't want to haul it in here. Plus I spill it all over when I use the gallon can. I have Dawn 3X detergent and Dawn 4X detergent and I have tried all four of those products to clean the plate. So the first thing I did after getting, after getting it mounted on the bed of the enclosed Ender 3 was wipe it off with iso isopropyl alcohol, level it and try a print and that's when some of this crap got made. So then I noticed some people are saying use acetone. So I switched from that to this and I printed up even more of that. <laughs> so uh, somebody else said try Dawn. So I tried the Dawn 3X because it was the first thing I s came to hand in the kitchen. I tried that and guess what? I got more of that. And um, <laughs> I also tried ABS somewhere along the line and that's the black ABS you'll see in there and that didn't work real well either. So somebody said to me, I was looking on, didn't say it to me, I was looking on the internet and they said, oh, use the Dawn 4X. So I asked the wife, where's the Dawn? And she came up with this one, Dawn 4X. So I washed it in that and I printed yet more of this. And there's, there's, there's probably, between all of this, there's probably five or six different attempts. Here's another one of the ABS ones back here, under there. You know, I got a lot of it. So... I decided there really didn't seem to be much of a difference between any of these cleaning products. So the next thing I said, Red said, scuff it up with thousand grit sandpaper. So that's the next thing I did. I took my thousand grit. Where is it? There it is. I scuffed it up. I wrapped it on this little flat block of finished wood and I scuffed it up in a couple of different directions. And I tried again. And you know what? It got a little better. It got a little bit better. One of these is in there too. That the, the ones that aren't totally spaghetti are the ones after I sanded it. It got a little better, but um, and I tried all the cleaning products again, but it still wouldn't stick. And I went to ABS like that, and one of these was ABS like that, and it still wouldn't stick. So I went to 600 grit sandpaper, and I sanded it down with that, and it got a little bit better. I mean, a couple of these are the 600 grit sandpaper. It got a little bit better. It did. And um, and then notice I re-sliced this for the different filaments. I didn't use the same one. It's the same um, STL for every everything I did. I used the correct parameters for each filament I used. So the next step was the 400 filament. And though I wiped down with at least one of these products, sometimes more every time I tried this. Honestly, I don't see much difference between wiping it down with a 91% alcohol, the acetone, or taking it out into the kitchen sink and washing it with Dawn, or either of the Dawns. It doesn't seem to make any difference. So after the 400 grit sandpaper, now things started to get a little bit better. I got, actually got this far in the ASA before it warped and came loose from the bed. And I, may, and I think I stopped that one before it actually got very far. And I actually got a completed black ABS. And you can see it did not come loose from the bed. It wasn't on there super tight, but it actually did print without warpage. I also, at this point in time, tried nylon. And it warped right off the bat, came loose from it. And I tried the polylite polycarbonate and it warped right off the bat and came loose from it. So it became apparent to me that it was kind of pointless to continue trying to use this PEI sheet and, and also along the way I tried different speeds, I tried I tried different gaps between the, the nozzle and the bed, some further away, one close enough that I accidentally scraped across the bed once and you know what? It didn't make a damn bit of difference. Now, I could have gone down and tried 220 sandpaper or even lower, but I thought, you know, let's do a little bit more experimenting somewhere else before we do that. So, using my binder clips, I just moved the 
spring seal sheet over to the Alpha YZ20 right there. And I tried it with PLA and I got a perfect print right off the bat. So that made me very happy. And somewhere around here there is a PETG one that I did on there. I don't know where it's at. Okay, sorry about that. So I did find the other prints. This was the black, successful black ABS that was done on the Ender 3. It got a tiny bit of warp to it, but honestly, unless this was some mission critical part, that tiny bit of warp won't matter. It did complete successfully without coming loose from the bed. You'll notice that you might notice, and you might not, that I did switch from a, a skirt to a brim. And I don't mind doing that, but if I have to go to a raft, that becomes to me just a complete waste of filament. I don't mind an eight-line brim, which I did on this, and it was successful. This is the black PETG that was done on the GTEC A10M, and it, it was back with a, a skirt again. So it worked fine with the PETG. Then this was the... Um, and this was kind of a dual test for me. This was a test to see if TPU, and this is a TPU I've used in some of my earlier tests, and where I made um, the feet for my ladder. I believe it is was Foxmart TPU. I don't think you can get it anymore, but it prints really nicely. Um, so this was a dual test, not only of TPU on the PEI sheet, but also TPU, the really, really super flexible TPU, on the dual gear extruder and I'm happy to say both work perfectly with it. So, where do I go from here? Well, I tell you one thing I did. I moved the magnetic sheet carefully as I could from the the enclosed Ender 3 to this GTEC A10M. This part is still on as I showed you. Let's get it loose. And um there it is there. So it stuck really well. There's quite a bit of infill in this. This is, one moment please, as Big Clive would say, one moment. <coughs> this is this. I have just modified it slightly. I have not cleaned the, um, the support or the stringing off of it yet. But that's that. But this is the... And one of the reasons I didn't want to go higher then 80 or 90 C over on the enclosed Ender 3 with this because I didn't want to take a chance of demagnetizing the magnet plate, magnetic plate because that is actually kind of cool. So what's the upshot of this? The upshot is that to me in the enclosed Ender 3 the PEI is next to worthless. The only thing I could get it to work for was ABS and that was in my opinion kind of marginal and it did require a brim instead of just a skirt. It did not stick with a ASA, with nylon, or with polycarbonate. Nothing I could do to get those to stick. I guess I could have tried a coarser, a coarser sandpaper, but to be honest with you, it wasn't sticking at all, so it didn't seem too terribly likely to me that that was going to make any real difference in it. So, I really like this for this printer. For, um, or for a standard Ender 3 that's not enclosed, where all you're going to be printing is PLA, PETG, and TPU. Seems to work really, really well. It is, in my opinion, a bit on the pricey side. I think I paid about $28, $30 bucks for the magnet and the, um, and the steel sheet. But you know what? For convenience, it is nice, even though I really never had much trouble with the um, mirror and hairspray. At least it's not breakable. Anyway, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. I will put an affiliate link below to the things I've discussed. And um, yeah, catch you guys the next time. Hope you have a great day. Bye for now.